first and foremost, um, if you missed it, GTC is now what? It was a little over a week ago. It was early last week. Um, had the chance to jump on CNBC and talk a little bit about it. So I'll put that in the show notes. But uh, you know, listen, this is a huge developer conference. It's a big moment. And if you haven't been paying attention, NVIDIA has been under a little bit of pressure over the last few quarters after a meteoric rise that took it to nearly a trillion dollar market cap. Uh, the company has come back to earth uh, probably after finding out, you know, A, that a lot of its GPU business was more closely tied to crypto than people expected. Two, as the supply chain has somewhat regulated, there's been an inventory glut. And over the last quarter, you might have seen a little revision to NVIDIA's numbers. Now, we're not here to talk about numbers, but I thought it was worth pointing out kind of where we are. So the question I was asked is, well, did NVIDIA do enough at GTC to stimulate growth and get it back on its better way? Now, the macro environment is crappy, um, terrible policy all around, um, hopefully some changes in November. But uh, they did announce new uh, a new uh, platform with Ada Lovelace, which is going to power its new GeForce RTX 4090. Um, it's got new ray tracing technology. They launched a whole new drive platform, which if you saw, and we'll talk about the Qualcomm event later, seems like they need that. Now, I want to focus, because there's too many things to talk about at once, I'm going to dive in and just talk a little bit about what the company announced uh, with the Omniverse. Um, Pat, for me, uh, that was the most exciting thing, was the company's migration to cloud. Now, we hear companies like Meta talking about a future in the metaverse. Well, in, in the reality is, is that for us to get to a point where people can consume and these immersive experiences, you need to be able to develop the software to do it. This is there's a lot of compute that required to do this. There's a lot of uh, des development that's required to do this. And Nvidia is very well positioned. So if you're not familiar with the Omniverse, that's that is the answer that Jensen and the Nvidia team have been talking about to basically enable developers to build applications for the metaverse. Um, the company took it one step further this uh, with this announcement of their cloud services. So basically, they're going to democratize. Uh, the capabilities and basically build out uh, more tools that developers can utilize to build for a metaverse in an, in an immersive future. And they're calling it the Omniverse Cloud. Now, there's a bunch of little announcements. They have a Nucleus Cloud, App Streaming, a Replicator, a Farm, um, and an Isaac Sim, they call it. So they're focused on A, uh, the, with the Nucleus to enable 3D designers, teams to collaborate anywhere to access uh, scene description, 3D scenes, and data. So, you know, when you're developing these ecosystems, you're going to have developers all over working together. Um, kind of like Figma, Pat, but for development environments. And then you've got app streaming, um, which basically allows for the streaming of Omniverse rep uh, uh, reference apps. Um, you've got the replicator, which, as you know, in order to create simulations, you need to basically replicate real-world data. They can be then created in this digital uh, environment. So they created a tool for that. Um, they have a farm for um, you know using multiple cloud instances on the Omniverse, and then they also did a, a scalable robotics simulation app. Now, try not to read all this. It's just so much at one time. So many things so happen at once. Um, yeah, this is that was by the way. If I have one complaint, too much, too many things announced, and I feel like we're not going to be able to do it justice because I'm not going to be able to talk about all the things that were announced. Now. Um, the one thing I guess I'll just say about the metaverse and the omniverse solution as a whole is I think we tend to think a lot about the applications like Facebook or what's going to be, but the real opportunity, in my opinion, is much more industrial. Um, I'm thinking the omniverse, the replicator simulation, this is for designing buildings that are going to be able to withstand massive um, uh, environmental challenges, for instance. This is for the ability to drive vehicles for millions of miles in a, um, in a you know, in real world environments where we can test the stability of a, of a system. This is for, you know, the ability to collaborate on the design of complex products and services with teams around the world. Um, this is where I really see the big opportunity, Pat, for the Omniverse. Uh, in the metaverse, of course, we're going to get the application where we're going to be able to go into retail stores and and be able to tour a new home. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking more and more the idea that you can kind of have photorealistic, 3D, synthetic environments created that are going to be utilized is the future. 
digital simulation. Think about healthcare applications, Pat, the ability to test surgical procedures. We've heard about this a while. It's moving in this direction. NVIDIA is building a lot of tools for it. And with the further democratization of Omniverse, I think it's going to be more available and we're going to see more to come. It's one of the most exciting areas, in my opinion, for NVIDIA's future. Yeah, that's good. Uh, good stuff, Daniel. You know, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm thinking like 30 years into the future, and I'm wondering if Omniverse and Metaverse is just kind of this um, short stop until we get the to full automation. Because if you think about it, uh, we feel good that we're putting, we're having a digital twin because we are uh, creating something digitally that is actually controlling something in the in the real world. And I'm just thinking, hey. If I look in the future and you look at autonomy where where it's not the human necessarily pulling pulling the switch in this in this omniverse, but it's just happening happening automatically. So anyways, um, I'm going to bring us back to ground here and talk about a few things that NVIDIA did on the edge. And, you know, it, it's interesting. Uh, NVIDIA is one of the few companies that can really lean into the future, and they came out with uh, two entire lines of edge uh, products that cover robotics, all the way from entry-level robots, you know, think uh, vacuum cleaners, uh, to high-end robots that are in distribution centers moving uh, carts uh, around and are, are, are called... Um, AMRs, uh, autonomous robots. So, uh, the first, uh, the first, ex uh, sorry, the first announcement I want to talk about is Jetson Orin Nano, and think of this as kind of entry level uh, robotics. They increased the performance by uh, 8x, which is just absolutely uh, nuts uh, if you think about it. And that's really an order of magnitude higher. And essentially, what that means is that. These little entry-level robots uh, have to rely less on the cloud and can make more decisions uh, while being uh, un, un, unconnected. I mean, think about uh, drones uh, for for a second. Um, uh, you know, you wonder, hey, how big is this market? Well, you know, this Jetson AGX Warren has over a thousand customers and partners. You know, think of companies like Canon, uh, uh, John Deere. Uh, even uh, Azure uh, for uh, the edge. So it truly is incredible uh, how quickly that this uh, market is going. And you um, you had made a comment about the Omniverse and medical and looking at uh, data. Well, um, NVIDIA brought out a, a, a brand new product called IGX for medical edge uh, AI, which is essentially uh, in my opinion, uh, has the capability to fundamentally change uh, not only how we figure out what's wrong with people or the diagnosis, but also preventative care, right? Um, you know, I don't know if you've seen this, but a bunch of startups uh, popping up who are essentially scanning your body and within, an, you know, a half an hour or an hour giving you the results of uh, you know, where they potentially found a tumor that's no bigger than uh, one uh, centimeter. So uh, hats off to NVIDIA, you know, this, the capabilities for kind of a whole body scan or the ability to speed up time to diagnosis where you might have to, let's say, ship it off to a uh, an x-ray outsourcer or an image outsourcer, it might be in India or something like that. Imagine the ability of having the combined intelligence of, of 100,000 uh, doctors to be able to uh, read uh, that data and get it back to you within five minutes before you leave. And, you know, the psychological uh, effects of kind of knowing what's going on. I mean, I'm sure you, you know, you can empathize with, you know, the, hey, you go in, you get you get something done and, hey, uh, come back in like a week and we'll, we'll tell you if you have something awful. Right. And then, you know, if you're anything like me, I'm kind of thinking about what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. But again, uh, hats off to uh, NVIDIA. Um, you know, they came out with this NVIDIA Clara hollow scan uh, built on IGX, which is a great example of this um, of these new types of uh, platforms. Yeah. 
Pat, the medical implications are huge. Love it. Uh, it's a huge market. I mean, we saw Oracle buy Cerner. We're seeing more and more vertical veneer, and, and then eventually it's going to be depth, and this is going to help provide that depth. 